Now, a couple of days ago, I noticed on my feed that To Your Eternity Season 2 has came out. And I couldn't help but feel hype and excited. The adrenaline start kicking in. I'm starting to click, click, click through Google Chrome, Crunchyroll, you know, press play. And before I press play, I pause and I talk to myself. I actually had a conversation. I'm like, am I ready for this emotional roller coaster? The depression, the anxiety start kicking in. And I'm just like, am I really ready for this train roller coaster? Because I know through all, if you watch season one, you couldn't help but just it was just a tearjerker your heart was breaking after another you had to patch that shit up but i was like you know what let's get into it it, it you know just just clicking on to it listening to the intro music they are using the same intro music as season one and i'm like let's go i don't care i love that song i love it i feel like a i feel like i'm at a pop bar screaming at the dj to play my song back Better yet, I'm like that guy on the Wu-Tang's Best Protect Your Neck, Protect Your Neck intro. If you really listen to that, I'm giving you guys a good song to listen to today. If you're not a, a Wu-Tang fan, go, just go still listen to it. But after, you know, diving deep into the show, you know, it's 40 years later. You know, you see, you still see Fushi in the same deserted, deserted island from season one. Same location, same everything, but he's really distancing himself, himself from people. You know, he he just tired of it. He he rather just deal with the knockers somewhere where no no one is around. He got to a state of depression where he was actually became a fish. You know, he he lost his sense of uh you know sight, and he could only rely on listening, feeling, and um you know just going and smelling and just smelling, and that's what he was going along with until you know. The, the guy in black pulled him up and said, hey, the knockers are here. Now, you notice Fushi had a lot of, you know, character development, especially when balancing his comrades, um, his past comrades that passed. And the way he, you know, used their bodies, their maneuverability, their combat tactics, it was very well played. And we all can see that, hey, Fushi has really developed. Now, to make knocker jerkies, after, after defeating the knockers was really funny because I'm like, well, damn, if that's not the perfect crime, I don't know what is. Now, you know, moving forward, he noticing that the knockers changed their tactics. They're like, listen, instead of going for Fushi, let's go for smoke him out. Let him come for us because we t- we've we been chasing his ass for the past 40 years and we're tired. We need him to come. And the best way to cut for him to come after us is if we hurt some people. And they did do that. They did do that for sure. And you can see, you know, Fushi is really frustrated, really, really um, angry about the situation to the point he was like, you know what, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go and go get him. Now, um, I'm not too sure what's her, I think her name is Hisami from the Jihad Strike. I, I, I might have said that wrong. I might have got that that point wrong. But she is um, Hayase granddaughter. And I know I was like, well... And she did explain that Hayase passed away and Fushi was laughing. I was feeling good too. I'm like, ding dong, the witch is gone. Let's <laughs> get her out of here. But as you notice, like when she tried to sleep next to Fushi, Fushi detected, you know, like how he detected knockers that a knocker is in this, this girl. And, you know, just to go back and forth, him, you know, making fun of the girls like, hey, you're nine years old. You don't know nothing and stuff like that. It reminds me a little bit how Fushi started off because he didn't know nothing. I'm like, well, that's very, <laughs> that's very ironic. But um, he noticed the knocker. He, he just didn't want to deal with her or any part of it. So, you know, eventually they reached to the village. Um, Hi, he, he saw me, um, you know, made the ultimatum like, you know, let, I'm going to go check it out. You don't have to go there. And the doctors came. And, um, to be honest, I didn't know it was Rohan and Tenori. I mean, I, to be honest, I, I seen the Tenori, I could have guessed it was Tenori if I said her name right. I, I could have noticed her from a long shot. And then when I seen Tenori, I could have guessed who was the, 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 the guy was, which is Rohan. And they do have some of the features. So, uh, you know, the age gap, especially with Fushi and all of them, it really looks very well. Paid. I'm like, yeah, that's how they would look if they're 40 years old. I, I totally agree with it. But she did age very well. Tenori still... She did age very well. She's still, you know, she's still doing her thing. And especially at the ending scene where Fushi, Tanari, and Rohan, they all in Hisame, they all in the same room. They're eating, they're drinking. And I just, and it was, it was Hisami's servants that was serving. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, 
grandmother, like granddaughter, the whole line, they love to poison people. That was a lot. Fushi's su supposed to know better. Tenari and Rohan don't know nothing about Isami, Hayase, and stuff like that. And, you know, Tenari was ready. She was war ready. She was like, I, I know what you're doing. She could, like, it, it almost like she could have smelled that poison from out of the cup. And she was just drinking it down, like, yo, what do you got? What do you got next? What else you got? What else you got? Oh, here's another one. This this knock you down in 30 seconds. She's still standing and the hawk came in, came in, slapped down the enemies, and you know, he saw me just looking like she's looking really stupid. But at the end of the day, guys, that's all I got. If you like the episode, hit that like, share, subscribe. Let me know what was your favorite part of the scene. What was, you know, what was your favorite part in season one? But anyways, guys, I'll see you on the next one.